In this video lecture, we're going to look at the stabilization of unstable systems. This is another important application of linear feedback systems. Let's take a look at some conceptual examples of what we mean by stabilizing an unstable system. A rocket or a missile or even an arrow is inherently unstable in that its direction can change um, due to just small changes in wind and things like that. So um, what we can put on a rocket are fins and fins tend to stabilize the rocket uh, with a simple mechanism. For example, let's assume that this rocket is supposed to launch perfectly vertical. And during its launch, um, let's say a little gust of wind comes along and it starts to tilt the rocket. So it starts, uh, its position or its orientation changes slightly. Well, what happens then is since the rocket is still moving upward, um, the drag force of wind resistance acts on the fins because the rocket is now tilted and this drag force will rotate the rocket back into position in this vertical position. Another example of uh, stabilizing an unstable system is something you can do at home. Um, it's called the inverted pendulum. Take a stick um, such as a ruler or it's a lot easier to do with a longer stick such as a meter stick or um, a broom and balance it on your hand. And if you don't move your hand, um, the stick will quickly fall over because the system is inherently unstable. Um, but by using feedback, by um, watching which way the stick starts to fall, um, you can move your hand and make uh, quick motions with your hand and actually get the inverted pendulum to stabilize and balance. Um, there's also a nice uh, YouTube video. There are several of them posted. Um, of uh, engineering students that did projects to stabilize an inverted pendulum. Um, one more example that's a little bit different is uh, that of population control. Animal populations are inherently unstable in the absence of feedback mechanisms. Um, so feedback mechanisms in wildlife are things like food supply and predators, and then even uh, man-made type feedback such as hunting and game management. So let's take a look at an example of how we can stabilize an unstable system by using feedback. Suppose we have a causal but unstable LTI system that is described by this transfer function, H of S. The transfer function is some constant B over S minus A, and A here is assumed to be positive. So A is the pole of this transfer function. And since A is positive, it's going to be over here in the right half plane. Well, remember from chapter nine, since this is a causal system, the region of convergence is to the right of the pole. And in this case, it does not include the J omega axis. So this is by uh, definition, an unstable system. We need this pole to be over here in the left half plane uh, for a stable system. So what we can do here is um, we can stabilize the system by actually moving this pole over here to the left half plane. And the way we do this is by putting this system um, into a feedback system. So here is our original system here. H of S um, is equal to B over S minus A. And remember this system here is not stable, but we're gonna take the output of the system and bring it back through a feedback loop and multiply it just by a constant K. Um, and so we can do some uh, system algebra here. So our output Y gets multiplied by K. So we get K times Y. Remember, this is a negative feedback system here. So X, the input um, is, uh, we basically add that to negative KY. So we get X minus KY, that signal goes into our original system, uh, which is H. Okay, so our output then is H times this input here, X minus KY. And that of course is equal to the output Y. So here is our system equation. We have the output Y is equal to H times X minus KY. This uh, equation right here came directly from the block diagram. Now let's uh, go ahead and fill in our transfer function H, which is equal to B over S minus A, and we get this result here. 
At this point, let's multiply uh, both sides by S minus A, the denominator here. So on the left side, we get S minus A times Y. And on the right side, all that's left is the B. So we get B, and I'm going to distribute that in here, B times X minus B times KY. At this point, let's group all our Y terms together on the left side. So I'm going to take this term here, minus B KY, and bring it over to the left side. One, and what's left then on the right is BX over here. And on the left side, I have all the terms with Y. So let's factor out the Y and I get S minus A plus B times K all times Y. So now we can find our overall transfer function for this system. Q of S is equal to the output Y divided by the input X. And so from this result here, we can simply divide um, both sides by everything in parentheses on the left side here. So that becomes our denominator. And um, the numerator here, we have the B, and we're gonna divide both sides by X to get Y over X. So what's left then is our transfer function for this whole feedback system here is given by B over S minus, and I put in parentheses, A minus BK. This is the new pole. Uh, what's in parentheses here. And notice the pole, which used to be just A by itself, is now A minus BK. So the pole has been shifted to the left by some amount BK. So as long as BK is greater than this distance here, then the pole is going to end up in the left half plane. And when we find the region of convergence, remember that's everything to the right of this pole, the region of convergence will include the J omega axis, meaning our system is not stable, is now uh, stabilized. And so the condition here, um, we need um, a BK to basically be greater than this uh, distance A here. So it turns out to be K has to be greater than A over B to stabilize this system. Here's another example of system stabilization using linear feedback. This one's um, just a little bit different from the previous one. So suppose again we have an unstable open loop system given by H of S um, is equal to 1 over S minus 3. So we see immediately that the pole here is at S equals positive 3. So this single pole is plotted down here. It's in the right half plane. So this represents an unstable system. So we're going to attempt to stabilize the system by placing H of S in a closed loop unity gain negative feedback system this time. So notice in this time we have K up here. So our feedback loop here has nothing in it. That's why it's called the unity gain feedback loop here. And again, it is negative feedback, which is indicated by that minus sign right there. So let's do our system algebra here. So we have Y coming back here and it's subtracted from X, so we get X minus Y um, going into this. This is now a controller with gain K. So what comes out of here is just K times X minus Y. That's the input to our original system, which has a transfer function of 1 over S minus 3. So we have K times X minus Y multiplied by 1 over S plus, I'm sorry, S minus 3. And that's this output here and we're back all the way around the loop. So this term here is equal to Y, which is repeated right here. So from here, we can now find our transfer function. So let's um, get rid of this fraction here by multiplying both sides by S minus three. Um, then we can uh, notice on the right side here, we have a K times X minus K times Y. So let's bring that K Y over to the left side and let's factor out the Y. And so we have S minus three plus K all times Y on the left and KX on the right. Now we can write our transfer function for the entire system here. Let's call that Q of S, which is Y over X. And from this uh, expression right here, we see that Y over X is just equal to K over S plus K minus three. All right, so let's find where the pole is for this transfer function Q. So remember to find the pole. We just set the denominator here equal to zero because we're finding roots of the denominator. 
So we have s plus k minus 3 equals 0. So we solve for s. s is equal to 3 minus k. So again here, notice that the pole used to be at s equals 3 right here. But now the pole is at s equals 3 minus k. In other words, we're moving the pole to the left by an amount equal to k. So one way to show this, and um, we'll just introduce this concept very briefly here, but it's using something called a root locus method. And basically that's just the path that this pole takes um, as we um, vary the um, magnitude of k here. So when k is zero, um, obviously s is just equal to three. So that's our original position of the pole. As we start to increase k, remember we're we're taking that k away from three. So we're moving the pole to the left. And when, when we hit three, when k is equal to three, notice the pole has moved right here to the origin. So anything greater than three for k is going to move the pole into the left half plane. And as we approach k equal infinity, um, the pole moves farther out to the left. So uh, to stabilize this system here, uh, we just have to make sure that k has a value greater than 3. So here's uh, one more in our last example in this video lecture on how to stabilize um, a system using, how to stabilize an unstable system using feedback. Um, let's suppose we have a uh, second order system. So notice this is um, our h of s, our transfer function, um, is a quadratic equation in S down here. So S uh, has an order of two here. Um, and this is unstable because we notice that the poles here, there's one pole at S equals minus two, um, but the other pole is again at S equals positive three, which is in the right half plane. So that makes this um, transfer function or this system unstable. So we're again, we're gonna try to uh, stabilize the system by placing it in a closed loop unity gain negative feedback system. And again, use the same principle of a controller with a gain uh, given by K. So um, again, we just kind of proceed like the last example. We have our output Y here is gonna come back here and be subtracted from X to get X minus Y. That's multiplied by K. And then that uh, signal here gets multiplied by this transfer function in here, which is our unstable system. So you can see I've multiplied this result here by what's in the box here, the transfer function. So here's our output, k times x minus y over s minus 2 times s plus 3, and that is all equal to y. So that is repeated right here. Um, from here, uh, we're going to determine the overall transfer function of this system. So let's get rid of this fraction. Let's multiply both sides by s minus 2 times s plus 3, and we get this result here. Um, notice on the right side, I have a kx minus a ky. So let's move that y over to the left side and put all our y's together on the left side and we'll leave our kx on the right side. Um, the other thing I did here was I foiled out um, these two terms here to get um, s squared plus s minus six. And then remember I added uh, k times y from on the right side. So there's the plus k there. And that all is multiplied by y. And then on the right side, we have kx. So our transfer function for the uh, whole feedback system here, q of s, is given by the output y over the input x, which is k over s squared plus s plus k minus 6. And that comes from this result right here. All right. Um, so the characteristic equation, um, which is, is the other way of finding the poles, that just means what is... Uh, what are the roots of the denominator here? So we're going to set the denominator, which is s squared plus s plus k minus 6, equal to 0. And this one's a little trickier because it is a quadratic equation. So we can use the quadratic um, equation or formula to find the two poles. And so um, the two poles, s1 and s2, are given by minus 1 half plus or minus 1 half times root of 25 minus 4k. So um, let's go ahead and plot these poles. Um, I noticed I made a, an error here, but it really won't affect what we're doing. Um, the, the negative pole should be at negative two. 
not at negative three, okay? Uh, so that this pole here will just be moved over a little bit here. I'm sorry for the confusing error there. And our other pole is at positive three, and you can see I mislabeled it at uh, positive two, but um, the, the fact is still that we have one pole over here on the left side and the other pole on the right side, so we can still use that result. Now, what happens here um, when k is equal to zero, um, we get the poles in their original places here. And as we start to increase k, um, well, you can see the motion of these two poles. This pole moves to the left and this pole moves to the right. And um, by doing just a little bit of, of algebra here, you'll find that when k is equal to six um, and greater, this pole here crosses over past the origin into the left half plane. So that is our, um, our, our condition for stability, is that this multiplier here, our controller, has to multiply by a number greater than or equal to six in order to move this um, pole here into the left half plane. Um, once, once we go past six, something kind of interesting happens. Um, when we get to uh, 6.25, this uh, radical here becomes zero. And when we're greater than six, so that's right here. And what happens then is both poles are sitting here at minus one half. So the two poles come together and meet right here on the real axis at minus one half when six is equal to 6.25. Once we keep increasing uh, K greater than 6.25, what happens here is the, um, the radical here becomes negative because 4K is greater than 25. So what happens is our two poles become complex, but the real part remains at minus one half, and that's key. So what happens is this pole here goes up and moves upward, and the other pole moves downward, all right, as K increases. But the key thing here is that the real part of the pole, both of the poles, remains at negative one half so these poles stay in the left half plane so the system remains stable for all values of k greater than six even though the um, poles become complex they are still in the left half plane which means the system is stable